Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the call. I know that uh, this is the Friday of spring break, and uh, it's been quite an unusual spring break for all of you, I know. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and for um, the service and, that you are already starting to provide for your students. We know that this is a, a time that is truly unprecedented, and I can't thank you enough. Um, I'm hearing stories about uh, some of the incredible work that's being done to already provide meals to students and um, bus routes that are delivering those meals or curbside uh, drive up pickup of those meals and I just want to say thank you to you and I hope you'll pass along my thanks to all of those members that uh, of your district that have participated in making that happen already. All right, so let's get started, and I'm going to just open up with a few points that we, I'd like to bring to your attention or discuss, and then we will allow for uh, the bulk of this time to answer questions that you present. So um, right now, I want to stress uh, the importance of the two-week closure after spring break and the intended purpose. It was to decrease and is still um, to decrease the spread within our communities, the transmission of the coronavirus. Uh, it is this opportunity that we have to flatten the curve. And this is why we want to stress that there should be no one at school unless they are directly working with those core essential services um, related to child nutrition, billing, uh, payroll, and of course, uh, it goes without saying, the maintaining of a sanitized area where those few members are working. Um, we, we know that this is also a time where uh, you're having to make decisions about who to call on uh, to provide additional support to load those uh, meals um, and drive them uh, in buses or um, for pickup lines. And I would just please ask that you do not make your non-essential employees come to the school during this two-week period. Only those essential to keeping the school functioning should be coming to school, functioning the, with those essential services. These should include those handling the finances, billing, and child nutrition, as I mentioned. So again, underscoring, we will defeat the purpose of a cessation of school operations if people can't be free to stay home and separate from the general population. As much as we can do that, uh, we will be protecting those we serve uh, ordinarily. Also. Uh, we know many of you are trying to plan for the future, and again, that should be done virtually over telephone conference calls or Zoom meetings, but not in person. Uh, there's also uh, some ideas that we are working on to mitigate the loss of income for our hourly employees. We know that because we are in an uh, epidemic and we have a statewide closure, it has triggered our ability to keep teachers working or pay, being paid without actually um, providing instructional services right now. And we are looking for remedies to be able to provide that beyond those that are identified in law today, but to include those who are part of our support staff. Um, however, that is likely to not happen as swiftly as we need because the legislature has um, stopped their, their work due to the Senate being um, off-site and in quarantine and um, having their, um, what do we call it, sheltering at home. Um, we cannot anticipate exactly when there would be movement, so we are looking at other ways to address these needs. One that we want to share with you, and I communicated to district superintendents yesterday um, with an emphatic plea to not call staff back into school for, for any reason except what I've just outlined, that they can follow the example of other districts and liberally award additional sick days to support employees. 
this is one immediate way to give them the assurance that they will have continued pay, but also it is something within your control that you can do right now. And we encourage you to follow the lead of other districts that have taken that step. Um, on a previous call that we have had at the department with, the, um, with my counterparts in other states, we received clarity on, some, on the payment of federally funded employees. We have been advised that federally funded employees should be treated as state funded employees. So whatever our, our plans are for those state employees can apply then to the federal employees as well. So in our case, those certified staff should continue to be paid as per their contract. And now I want to ask you to um, think about the timeline that we're in right now in two different phases. The first phase uh, with March 17th to April the 6th is a time that we are playing defense. This is about student safety, child nutrition, keeping people home and safe and social distancing and sheltering at home, not at work. Uh, that is the mission for right now, as this is the only window we have to stop community transmission after spring break. Now, after April the 6th, we'll be transitioning into how do we allow for our students to continue learning? How do we ensure that our students can graduate? What can we do to protect the um, the education of our students in high school and understanding how decisions we make right now can impact GPAs for years to come, scholarship opportunities, et cetera. So thinking through those high school issues, counseling that's needed, those kinds of things that are still uncertain with regard to ACT and SAT on the national test dates um, and applications to colleges, all of that is really in a place of, of undetermined status. But we want to be thinking now about how we can support our students from kindergarten, preschool, all the way through 12th grade. And our immediate focus is on helping our students graduate that need to this year. So think about this. This next phase is going on offense. And I will ask you to begin the thinking and planning as we will do the same here at the department and with uh, those education leaders that are supporting different membership organizations that you belong to and are representing those um, of your colleagues as well. To think about how do we deliver education and continued learning after April 16th so that we can finish the year should we be unable to return to our school buildings. And uh, in that vein, it, I made the decision um, in consultation with individual members of our state board of my intent to seek a waiver so that testing, statewide testing is not on the minds of our schools right now. Uh, we are planning to end testing this year. We will not um, have our testing vendor ship any materials to you. It is not happening. And that means that there also will not be a school report card as well. Um, he was at oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if I misspoke earlier and said April 16, I meant April 6. Excuse me. Uh, so testing is something we don't want you to have to think about. However, I know that there are going to have, you will have questions about RSA, about um, the eighth grade reading test and driver's license um, uh, piece, et cetera, U.S. history, um, AP, AP exams, et cetera. So we can answer those as you have those questions in just a minute. Um, I do want you to know, though, that we are also working to answer those questions and some of the solutions that we have around RSA and the eighth grade driver's test, uh, we will share with you on a future call. But please know we are working on it. Um, I will tell you that on U.S. history, we'll be taking this to the state board meeting next Wednesday, March the 25th. We expect to take an emergency rule to the board 
to allow the state to request a medical exemption from assessments on behalf of all students. This would then be granted in the case of, the, of U.S. history so that um, assessments so that that assessment is waived as well. Uh, this may also be an option for the eighth grade driver's test, but we are not um, yet prepared to say that until we talk with our partners at the Department of Public Safety as this is uh, a bill, uh, as this is a law that, that they are uh, part of as well. Okay, so um, we want to go on and talk a little bit about the discussion of distance learning uh, we can't just have a decision come forward uh, closer to time and not be ready to do what is going to be required should schools be unable to open after April 6th. So that discussion is, again, robust and is um, actively engaged right now with uh, superintendents and principals and teachers um, and those organizations that represent them. I want you to rest assured that we are aware that um, having an alternative delivery method is going to look different in different places. Uh, we know that online learning is something that over 200 of our districts already have developed and have an ability to provide as they've done advanced planning in this work, and, and we commend that. But not everyone is there. Uh, we understand that this is going to be extremely challenging where we do not have mobile hotspots or uh, access to um, even telephone lines um, and, and that type of capability um, where there's lacking IT. Uh, but we are um, not unique in this. Other states are facing the same concerns. We do uh, plan to seek federal assistance with this and uh, what we know that this will be much broader. So we're looking at how we can also loosen some of the uh, restrictions related to our federal dollars and also state dollars so that we are able to allow uh, much more flexibility as you are able to purchase uh, with some of those dollars. Now, any technology that may be needed or if we can provide those, we are seeking to do that as well. Even though that may not be um, ideal for younger students. Uh, so we're looking at how do we do that for our younger students as well. And uh, uh, we know, I have full confidence in the um, commitment and ingenuity and creativity of our leaders, uh, our teachers, I know are chomping at the bit to connect again with their students um, and already they have inspiring uh, work that's being done to um, provide even a story time to some of their kindergarten teachers through Facebook that anyone can see, including uh, members of, of their own class, just as uh, something that they wanted to do on their own personally. But I'm ready to unleash that creativity, but again, that has to be done remotely. We cannot have people gathering in schools at all except for those critical functions we already outlined. So I want you to look for a survey that will come regarding student connectivity. Uh, we need to gauge the connectivity capabilities and the needs of IT very, very rapidly. So I would ask that once you see that and receive it, that you turn that information back to us as rapidly as you can so that we can then prepare for what may come. All right. Uh, let me also mention regarding the funding and that flexibility, we will approve RSA funds to specifically purchase for the purchase of devices and mobile hotspots, if that's something that is helpful to know right now. And then also, as I mentioned, USDA is aware of the need for greater flexibility over carryover for federal funds. I mean, USDE is aware of that need of the carryover for federal funds. And we anticipate guidance, and that'll be forthcoming as early as even today, but certainly in the coming days. Um, additionally, we look to provide guidance 
about which federal funds can be used for remote learning and which cannot. Um, in addition, special education students and how to meet their needs uh, are uh, at top of mind for us as well. Uh, look for guidance that uh, will come for specifically the distance learning component potentially of meeting needs of students of a whole variety of needs in um, special education and on IEPs. And uh, then finally, I will have a question for you. What other funds could we use, could you use additional flexibility in order to use them on some of the items that we've discussed? So please add that to the chat box as you think of those. Um, I would also like to give you an update on some of the information that is um, the latest that we have on from the health department. And I'm looking for that information now. Um, my understanding is that there are still we're at 49 cases. We're at 49 cases, but 300 and is it 79? I know more than 360 are still pending. 300 and I know it's 70. Three, okay. 370 some are pending, uh, and 300 of those were sent to Dallas to be um, for additional support in getting the information um, back of those test results. So we are in a place where we may not know the answer, but we need to act as if uh, each of us are carrying that virus as we go about our day um, and take extra precautions, even things that are commonly used, trying to discourage that. If you are uh, at your office and there's work that the encumbrance clerk is doing and you have payroll and um, other others that are working with um, billing and you have a coffee pot that everyone is using. I mean, just start thinking about how you can limit transmission and assume that you're a carrier right now, a, a vector with this virus, and that will help. All right, let's open this up now for questions that you have. Uh, we have Carolyn on the, the line, actually, virtually, who is going to read some of those questions and will answer as we have in the past. Yes, good morning, Superintendent. Can you hear me? I can, thank you. Okay, so we have a lot of questions about sick days and awarding sick days, um, particularly uh, would a district be able to use emergency days as opposed to sick days in concern about restrictions and state law about the number of sick days that can be awarded? Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. Uh, I understand this is with respect to support employees. Um, I think that's a, a local decision primarily, but uh, the flexibility does exist uh, to use 10 days of sick or to grant an additional 10 days of sick leave as well as an additional 10 days of emergency leave at the uh, local level as determined. And again, uh, we are working on a solution for this, but in the meantime, uh, that flexibility does exist. Right. Is there concern about um, essentially awarding some people sick days and not others? Again, I think those are local determinations, but um, if, if certain individuals are declared to be essential for those support functions, um, those are just going to have to be resolved uh, locally uh, as best they can, but uh, I do share that as well. I would also like to add Counselors that... Counselors considered teachers for purposes of being allowed... Uh... Absolutely. Yes, absolutely they are. Um, we did identify that in the guidance as, as well that we sent out earlier this week. Uh, we interpret that uh, broadly to include counselors, supervisors, any instructional capacity, as well as others that are set out, school nurses, uh, librarians, And again, go ahead. Um, no, that's okay. Go ahead. 
Okay, could you clarify whether or not custodial and janitorial um, individuals can be considered essential and can be asked to come to school? Yeah. Yes. But it ha again, this is not about widespread deep cleaning and every janitor that is on the payroll is coming into the building. This is about meeting the sanitation needs that support those areas of critical function. Okay, um, maybe let's move on to, um, to some other areas. Do you have any idea when we'll have a decision about a closure after April 6th, further closure? Yep, uh, this will be taken to the board uh, beginning next Wednesday morning. I think though, no, you know, certainly we have, um, we can look to what is occurring in other states and it would, it would be irresponsible to not be making plans right now for how we continue learning for students after that date if <clears throat> with a distance learning model. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, could we um, maybe um, revisit the conversation about instruction um, uh, remotely? Um, there was a question about when that instruction could begin to be provided. No instruction until April 6th. I don't know how to make that more clear. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, if I can just jump back in on the, the questions about leave and the policies that we were discussing earlier. Um, in addition to the guidance that, that we have put out, I know a number of organizations around the state have been uh, great partners in, in working with us along the way. Uh, I'll just mention that I know the State School Board Association has a number of those policies, um, particularly with respect to leave on their website. Uh, Superintendent or Brad, could you address um, the need to possibly pick up medication at the school office? Yes. 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 Then, of course. Of course. That that is that is needed. Um, that that is not congregating of people. Oh, she did. Can you mention that, yeah. Phil? Right. Uh, hey, all. This is uh, Phil Backrack, Chief of Staff. I just thought I'd mention uh, shortly after we began the this call. Uh, uh, Secretary DeVos did send a letter to states indicating that uh, they are prepared to uh, expedite waiver requests with regard to assessments and accountability. Excellent. So hopefully we'll have uh, yeah. an answer on that Excellent. later. That's, that is a good sign. Okay, next question um, regarding granting additional sick leave, does that, or emergency days, whatever it may be, does that need to be a board action? I think primarily the answer to that is yes. However, um, as we've put out in guidance, I think boards have local flexibility to grant decision making to um, the superintendent um, in the interim between board meetings. And so that could be taken up as well. Okay. Do you have any um, information on AP testing at this time? Um, is Craig on the line? Does he have an update other than us? Let's see, um, as we're getting Craig. And I might just say, you might check the AP website. I checked it a couple of days ago and they had noted they were trying to find a way for students to take their AP test online. Um, so we'll be waiting on further instruction from them. Very good. I'd also like to note that there is a really great resource on the OSSBA website um, that is, um, you, you did? Okay, so just keep that in mind. Thank you, uh, Brad, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I had diverted my attention and you already mentioned it. All right, Craig, um, Craig if, um, as soon as Craig's able to 
um, maybe he can text someone and we'll share that with you. I'm sorry. Um, we are also working out what, how to work remotely and still participate um, on this call. So this is the first time we've tried to do that. Here's a message that was sent in. Okay. okay. As of March 17th, the AP program is developing resources to help schools support student learning during extended closures as well as a solution that would allow students to test at home. Depending on the situation in May, additional information will be posted by March 20th. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Could you hear that? Petra Woodard. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Carolyn, could you tell me if that, if you picked up? Yes. That. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we heard that. Okay. Ready for next question? Yeah. Um, maybe, uh, Brad, could you address um, some other requirements that are upcoming regards to um, if there are seniors that are scheduled to take CPR in order for graduation and any update on uh, requirements for TLE? Sure. Um, great question. Uh, at the board meeting next week, we currently anticipate taking a number of these items for uh, requested exemptions, extensions, or waivers. Uh, CPR is one of them. Uh, we're also looking at the school calendar um, as a waiver for that. Certain flexibilities on textbook funds, um, RSA, audit acknowledgement forms, uh, meaning instead of having the requirement to have your board have a meeting to uh, approve the audit and submit that uh, after that board meeting, uh, perhaps we could waive that and have the district submit the audit because we know that those are done at this time. So those are just uh, samples of current waivers we're looking at. And we would Questions appreciate it. about um, being able to go ahead and prepare for instruction. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, and we would appreciate if you can think of other things that need waivers uh, similar to what Brad just mentioned. Please mention those or email us. That, that would be really helpful. Okay, are there any restrictions on teachers right now just communicating with parents if they, um, if parents are asking for help, um, can a teacher provide any resources to a parent that is, is wanting that? Sure, I'll, I'll be happy to take that one. I think we had this um, on the call earlier this week. Um, there's not a, a prohibition on voluntary uh, communication between teachers and families. Um, or anything of, of that nature. Um, again, I think we've we've emphasized stop. We're trying to put a stop to the in-person gatherings. But if if an individual wants to voluntarily uh, communicate with families, then that's their personal that, yeah, that's, choice. Um, and and we also need to have school remain closed for students over this 10, 10 day window um, or two week window for, for, for other reasons as well. <clears throat> um, I, I do think though it's, it's fair though that, you know, I know you need to know what's coming next as soon as possible. And uh, I again just see it being very unlikely that school buildings will be open for class in a traditional way. Um, and those who need to make <clears throat> plans right now on how they can deliver the, the learning and, and can continue that um, to complete their year, uh, that's really the, the request for this call is to begin that thought process um, and then you'll be able to uh, pinpoint items, uh, areas that need <clears throat> addressing or clarification to us as well so that we can make sure we have addressed that in guidance. Um, that is something that all states are grappling with uh, and we are seeking other remedies to assist you if you do not have the technology or connectivity right now, um, but, but this, this is something we want there to be certainty about. Um, we also know that um, there's some level of 
learning that will be key in doing this. And I just want you to know that we will be extending a lot of grace and understanding around that. Um, we know that many may not have the bandwidth even for some of what we're asking um, and proposing. But again, that will be really defined at the local level. And we know that we will be inspired by those um, creative ways of doing this uh, in our own state, within districts, um, and, and out of state. All of you are connected to membership groups, more than likely, that have uh, a national collaboration among states. And we, we are all talking um, together in this way and are learning from one another. And we'll continue to do so. <coughs> Um, I think it's sorry, Superintendent. Go ahead. I just was going to say we're, we're we will be providing more formal um, information with even a um, you know information that you can access online um, on our website to begin the process of thinking and planning. Uh, it'll start with that survey, and so I just want you to know that we're not just leaving you out there to figure it out. Um, we are working with COSA and OSSBA and OPSRC and OEA and other membership organizations to help really um, build that framework and support for you. And, and that is something that we've put a very tight turnaround on uh, for ourselves so that we can give you ample time before April 6th, as much as you could have. Ready for next question? Yeah. Um, could you um, talk a little bit more about equity as far as access to devices and to Wi-Fi um, for students while they're um, out post April 6th and any efforts that, um, that you have to address those? <clears throat> yes, so we are going to be working relentlessly to try to um, make that equitable, but it won't be. And we have to recognize right now, it just won't be. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we are going to ask you to serve all the students we can serve and that we get that process going for every student we can right now as we are working to um, then help you answer where there is a gap. Uh, but this is something that we cannot delay we won't be ready for everyone, and our kids can't, should not have to wait if, if they can start that uh, learning process again and resume that. Uh, but again, I want to underscore, we want that to begin on April 6th, not, not before. And I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only saying this meaning do not begin the um, instructional piece of school before April 6th, but be prepared in, in the event that uh, we cannot resume traditional delivery as you had prior to um, the 1st of March. Okay, I have a couple of questions for Jennifer Weber regarding child nutrition. Uh, Jennifer, could you give an update on the waiver request for those sites that are under 50%? That has not been approved, still has not been approved by USDA. There, uh, the National Office is working on some legislation that was passed um, and signed by President Trump on Wednesday night, I believe, and we have not been given full guidance on that. They're hoping late today, um, and what they, I just got off a call with my regional office, um, late today or Monday. But they have to, it was passed, but they have to sort through it and find out what the logistics are and what we're allowed to do within that and how far we can push that or how far they can push some of that legislation. So um, we're waiting on that. I do not know if it includes a waiver, a blanket waiver for 50% free and reduced sites. I do not know, but ours has not been approved yet. Okay. okay. Jennifer, could you clarify if it's accurate that um, schools can feed any student age 18 and younger or um, age 21 and younger for special education students um, from any district in addition to their own district? Yes, yes, we're saying yes. I also want to add to that, if a child turned 19 and is still attending school because 
they maybe were held back in elementary school or whatever the case may be and they don't have a physical disability or anything, a 19-year-old can eat. They're still currently enrolled in public school. There's many details on that and it's hard to get each detail out to everyone, but I have had a call about, um, I have seniors that are 19, can I feed them? Absolutely, yes. They're still enrolled in the public school and attending when school's in session. Thank um, you. And Go ahead, Superintendent. No. no. Uh, do, should students be in the car if meals are going to be picked up at the school? Should, should, they, should family stay in the car as opposed to getting out of the car to picking up their meal? We, the directive we've been given, and we have asked this on our daily call with our regional office for clarification, and the directive we've been given just even this morning is yes, the children need to be in the car to receive a meal. Now, there's lots of caveats to that, obviously. What if a child's at home sick? Right now, I have to go with the directive I've been given, and that is they have to be in the car. As soon as a different directive is given for that, I will send something out through our car system letting everyone know. Thank you. And you know, I, I just want to celebrate for a moment each and every one of you leaders out there t today who are doing things in the best interest of students and the staff who are devoted to your school. Um, do what's right. When in doubt, do, do what's right. And I've seen really remarkable examples of that, and I, I just applaud those of you who, who are being leaders in this situation and, and really earnestly seeking to meet the needs of your kids. That is what this is about right now. It always is, but every, the, 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 me, the meeting of their nutritional needs keeping them safe, keeping your staff safe, not penalizing someone that's a staff, support staff that's undergoing cancer. And, and we're getting a few of those calls here um, where people are in fear. And we just appreciate your leadership in calming that and reassuring them that you're gonna do everything in your power to keep things moving in a way that protects the community and safeguards a lot of the concerns people have. Okay, hey, um, one last uh, child nutrition question, I think, um, just along the lines of students having to be in cars. If parents don't have a car and the students typically walk to school, can they walk up and get a meal? Yes, absolutely. They just, again, should not congregate in big groups while they're there. They should get the meal and proceed. On. Grab and go. Grab and go. Okay, um, switching gears a little bit here, um, Superintendent, could you address possibly accreditation audits for the remainder of the year? I'm going to have Brad address sure. what we're working on yeah. this. Uh, and I, I wish Ryan uh, Piper were on this call. Um, I talked to him yesterday. A number of these items um, will be included in the waivers that we're anticipating taking to the board. Um, it appears Ryan is on the call. Um, taking to the board next week. Um, I understand that some of the visits had been previous, previously scheduled. Uh, we're working as, as best we can to continue any of those requirements that either have not been waived at this time um, um, virtually Brad? But, uh, yep. Uh, yes, uh, the REOs are working with, with districts right now and in this, this time of uncertainty, extending just as much uh, uh, grace as we can uh, with what we know right now. We know that obviously on the 25th, uh, that picture is going to look a lot different and we'll get communication out to districts as, as soon as possible with as much information as we have at that time. Thanks, Ryan. Do you want to mention um, Phil's reading some of the questions as well? Could you answer? Um, oh, I do. I, excuse me. This is Phil again. I just wanted to mention. I, I know we've gotten a few questions about concerns from child nutrition workers uh, with regard to meal distribution or meal preparation, 
if they are in danger of transmitting the virus or how does that work? Uh, I mean, I, I would defer to Jennifer. I'm not an expert on this, but I would presume that there are food safety measures and preparing yeah, of meals the that I, with the health department, I would assume that people would uh, adhere to. I think the alternative is just not to feed uh, hungry children. I, just, I don't think any of us think that the alternative is conscionable. It's important that those are those uh, uh, child nutrition support staff are healthy and we we want them to not come to work of course if they are having any symptoms or or just don't feel um, that that they are fully well um, you know we we all or they have someone in their home that that is ill and it, you use common sense but uh, I think it's definitely important We've got a lot of people that want to help support the feeding of children, and we know that the very best way to deliver that is uh, at the school site for now. Um, but um, we're seeing just some really incredible things happening with those who are serving this already on uh, bus stops. We've made where kids then come to the bus stop and take those meals from there. And uh, I, I was I was reading. Um, learning about one of the schools that I think had 343 bus stop deliveries just yesterday. So um, that's, that's pretty incredible work with that planning that's gone into feeding kids and uh, we applaud that effort. I also had learned on one of our um, state, state level national calls with other states uh, that, that there is a um, one school district that is actually using distance learning and the bus routes as a way to get packets to students. Um, and I don't know the details of how they managed um, to know how to send those, but it's an interesting idea for those who do not have internet or uh, connectivity capability or devices. Zoom also has free platforms. Again, you have to have the um, ability or phone uh, it might be an alternative, but you have to have the device, and that's what we're working on right now. With um, We have already a state-level contract. Um, it's the monthly subscription that costs the device for mobile hotspots that are free, uh, but we're, we're working on a large-scale um, solution, and yet if districts are ready to go with um, the use of funds with the flexibility we're giving, we don't want you to hesitate in, in uh, thinking about how you need to address those needs if you are ready to do so with more purchasing power right now. Are you ready for next question? Yes. Okay, if I could um, point this toward Craig, although I thought he was on now, it just looks like he disappeared. Um, question about WIDA testing materials that um, either are in transition or at the school site. Um, what do schools need to do with those materials, Craig, if you're able to answer? It looks like he was on and then he disappeared, so we'll go to a different uh, question. Um, Superintendent, could you just clarify again whether or not schools are expected to begin remote learning on April 6th and, and kind of what um, school begins to look like after April 6th, what the expectations are? The expectations are something that are being worked out and are going to be um, certainly defined by what's possible, uh, but it's, it is important that that planning that we shift from, you know, Defense was the first step, and we have established defensive measures to keep people safe and healthy and nutritional meals in place. Two meals a day can go uh, out at one time. That cuts that bus route in half if you were to deliver twice. And then the second phase is this offense. How do we do the learning that needs to occur to finish the year? We don't want kids to lose skills, but we also know that enrichment may be um, in, initially, what, what we're looking at as we are learning through this time of gearing up. Um, it's not going to be perfect. We know that. Uh, we're, we're asking for 
you to um, give yourself that that leeway that is needed to do the right thing for kids to keep them learning. And and we're going to learn from one another and we're going to be helping um, bridge some of those gaps with information as well. Uh, Superintendent, if I can just jump in here real quick. I've, I've seen the question a few times um, about the legal authority, what the citation is, et cetera, for the support leave uh, questions that I answered earlier. I guess before getting into that, I, w I will just say that nothing about this situation um, has been requested or it, it is where we are. And so we're trying to ensure, number one, that the health and safety is, of everyone is, is the priority. Number two is taking care of uh, our critical support employees uh, within the confines of the statutes and rules that we have them right now. And then if there are any waivers we can take, um, you know, obviously we're going to be taking those as quickly as we can. Um, and so with that said, the legal authority that we're looking at is in Title 76-104. Uh, and then in the federal law, um, which is HR 6201, uh, that discusses the additional 80 hours of sick leave that can be granted. Um, are we taking a liberal, liberal interpretation of some of these statutes and rules? Uh, the answer is yes. In the times that we're facing right now, yes. Um, but you know, I just wanted to answer that question. Okay, any other questions? And, and maybe Brad, just a note, but there was a, a mention of the possibility that um, the graduation requirement for personal financial literacy for seniors that haven't maybe fully completed that might need to be um, taken under consideration also. Okay, thank you. Um, Superintendent, I think um, perhaps lastly, um, unless there's some other last question that hasn't been answered. Um, it, there's still been many questions about um, whether or not teachers could come to the school building in small groups, um, okay. whether or not it's advisable that um, building principals and secretaries be in their buildings to field calls and, and things of that nature. No, no. Not a big help. Can, can principals and secretaries be at the building to answer calls? The board's order uh, was essential clerical and administrative uh, functions. I think in light of how we've answered the questions all along, uh, including the superintendent's email that was sent yesterday, ensure that the safety and, and health and well-being of people is the prime consideration. We want your principals and we need your principals to be healthy. They need to be at home, sheltering at home. Everyone that we're going to need in a second phase of finishing the year has to stay at home right now as, and we're only wanting people in school who are critical to keeping the operation and payroll and and child nutrition operating and, and I, I I hope that I know that there is a desire to engage but they don't need to do that in the building they can do that in phone conversations with with you um, there can be planning that you do remotely. Okay, we are living this, we are living this too uh, at there, we, we've sent nearly everyone home at the State Department of Ed and we are adjusting to this right now. Superintendent, if Monty is available to talk, I've got a couple of Title I questions. Monty, are you there? Uh, we almost have Monty. Okay. 
Monty? We have the full Monty now. Full Monty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hold on, we do not, almost. Hello, oh, now it's showing unmuted. Oh, you, we can hear you. <laughs> what was the question? Well, Sorry, we have some Title I questions. Um, first of all, um, do we have any guidance on uh, federal timesheets for um, uh, employees that are getting paid um, by uh, Title I funds and their timesheets during this time if they're doing um, some sort of work for the school helping out? We have not received that at this time. We're assuming it's in that, the package that falls under the same uh, regs and interpretations that are coming out of child nutrition. So it, it will probably be another day or two before we get those interpretations. Okay, uh, additionally, um, can uh, you, a school still be reimbursed uh, by Title I for aides who were in the classroom, but now are helping with other areas like uh, maybe delivering meals? We're, we're gonna follow along as, and do our reimbursements as liberally as we can. So if we're doing that for some uh, employees that are paid through state funds, we're gonna follow along with the fact that we can do that with em, uh, employees paid with federal funds as well. Okay, very good. I, I think superintendent that we've really covered okay, just, uh, just about just, everything else. Can you pause for just a moment? We're not ready to get off yet. All right, more information to come after the March 25th board meeting. Again, though, I want to emphasize the whole point of being out for two weeks after spring break travel, and this is the window to focus on safety. Um, we, we understand the desire to be ready to ramp up and go, um, and we will try addressing some of these concerns a little bit more um, uh, specifically during our March 25th board meeting. But um, for, for right now, please, you can plan as, as needed, uh, but, and that is not having instruction with students, but you can do that in ways that don't require people to be up at school together. All right. Um, all right. Any have we um, touched on most of the areas? I think that you all have mentioned. Um, let me see. Just one second. I want to just take one look at. Um, Okay, got it. Okay, so I think I'm just reviewing in case there is um, anything that's come through on my text messages and uh, that we would all need to have um, addressed. I appreciate all of you, appreciate your patience. Um, with, if you have some um, additional questions, we, we certainly want to be able to uh, support what you need to do. Um, I, think, I think everyone gets what we're saying now and there's no need to repeat it again, but um, I just want to reemphasize how thankful and grateful I am for your leadership and um, how you, you are being asked to make decisions uh, without spe specific certainty on what things are going to look like on April 6th. And I know that's a difficult place to be. Um, but let's plan as if the buildings will not be able to be reopened for students to have learning there. And we are seeking additional guidance um, with regard to special education students, what that looks like virtually, um, and how we meet the needs of our English learners, um, get our kids graduated, et cetera. And uh, so I appreciate your patience with us. We're working um, to help support you, but we know that 
Um, there's always room for improvement, and um, we, we're learning through this every single hour. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I hope that um, you get some sleep, take your vitamins, <laughs> uh, and, um, and we will be giving more information about some other ideas and ways we can collaborate to um, look outward beyond our student family and help our um, physicians and hospitals as well, and there'll be more to come on that. Thank you again. I appreciate so much uh, your time on this call. Take care.